All right, so welcome to the uh, Python installation tutorial uh, for the Automating GIS Process course. This is an optional uh, task for those who want to have the tools on their own computers. And I will demonstrate the installations on my Windows uh, computer. I have a uh, Windows 10 operating system. Uh, you can find most of the instructions under course information. So the first step uh, would be to install uh, actually Miniconda. So you need to have Python on your computer. So the Python interpreter and related, related tools. And we rec recommend that you install Python via this Anaconda distribution. You can install the full Anaconda. So it will come also with tools for R and all these readily installed packages. But for this course, we actually recommend that you install this Miniconda. I'll show the documentation quickly, which is a mini version of Anaconda. It comes with Conda, which is the package manager, and then, so, then some very basic ingredients. So it comes with a basic Python installation. Uh, I have asked the students who are following now to install Miniconda uh, already before, but you can then, uh, Download the latest version. Version from here comes with Python 3.8. Uh, for other operating systems, you can find the download links under here. And I think the process should be pretty much similar to the steps I'm doing on Windows. And Windows is maybe the, well, I don't know, most difficult, but there's always something funny that goes with when installing stuff on Windows computers. So, um, but then again, most of our computers here at the University of Helsinki are Windows computers, so that's what we are working with. Okay, so install Miniconda, that's the prerequisite. And this page now installing Python is the same uh, instructions as in the GeoPython course materials. So here is a basic, uh, basic uh, description, of, description of how to install these packages using the Conda package manager. So there is also another approach using PIP, uh, which we discussed in lesson four of the GeoPython course. PIP is also very useful for installing Python packages, but it's, if possible, it's good not to mix PIP and Conda. And for these packages that we are using in this course, we recommend to install everything using Conda. So good to be aware that there is this tool called PIP used for installing packages, but you won't be needing it, hopefully, for installing these tools that we are using. Um, and in addition, Conda has these different channels, uh, and most of our tools will be uh, installed from this Conda Forge uh, channel. Let's check that out quickly as well. So there might be a bit different versions in different channels, uh, and the rule of thumb is to if possible, install packages from the same channel so that they are compatible with each other. So this Conda Forge contains many, many tools for scientific computing, such as then Pandas and GeoPandas, the latest releases of those. Uh, all right. Uh, so you can install packages one by one. And if you only need, let's say, Pandas and Matplotlib, you can install them to your basic kind of the main Python. But for this uh, GIS part of the course, we recommend that you would create a separate Python environment. So now I move to this creating a Python GIS environment page. And what are Python environments? So basically, when you install Python, you get this python.exe on a Windows computer. So this executable that then uh, starts Python, it reads your code and then uh, translates it to the computer. But then if we create different Python environments, we can have different setups. So for example, older versions of certain packages or one environment for all this complicated GIS stuff and then another environment for some super simple stuff. Uh, and there might be then that if you have some very specialized package, for example, to for some machine learning task. It has some dependencies that might be somehow specific. 
so then it's good to kind of keep uh, the environment the environment separate, especially if you're installing special tools, because then if you get kind of these uh, conflicts between package versions, you might in a way mess up your basic Python installation, uh, which is not super dangerous as well, but it's easier to manage things if you, if you then create these uh, environments. Mm. And for that as well, there are different tools, but we will be using again Conda, Conda environments for uh, creating then this separate GIS tool, toolkit for us. Mm. And how to do these uh, environments? Conda has an excellent documentation, so most of the information is explained in there. Uh, so this, this page, I never, for example, remember these commands by heart. I go here, here and check. But so you can refer back to this page over at our course pages, we have collected the main steps. So basically, when creating an, a separate Python environment, we well, create it and give it a name, we activate it. And then once inside the activated environment, we install the packages. So these three steps. Uh, so we could, we could do that following these instructions and then uh, install the tools that we are using in this course, we'll start using GeoPandas, we continue using Matplotlib uh, and other packages. Uh, and then as we are using JupyterLab, you can also install that inside your Python environment using Conda uh, with the Git plugin that hopefully works uh, to get those tools as well, well linked to your uh, GIS Python environment on your own computer. So, we could create the environment, activate it, and then run all these commands on the command line. Uh, but to make things still even easier, uh, and what I'm going to now show in practice, step by step, is that we can then put all these, um, the list of packages that we want in our environment, and the name in a configuration file. Um, so this is this kind of YML uh, file which is human readable. And this will then tell to the computer that what, what name will our uh, environment have from which channels we want to install these packages. We can even specify the Python version. So for some tools, you might find some script from the internet that only works with Python 3.5 or some packages that are only work with an older Python version might be possible. Mm, so you can specify that and then list of the List of the packages, this pandas, pandas bokeh comes from this uh, separate channel. So you can specify it in there. And you could even specify uh, specific versions for different packages. But here we want to install all the latest tools uh, based on this list. Mm -hmm. And then once we have that in a file, we can just run one command and then uh, our computer will, will do all the installations. So let's do that. I'll show it. And then after I have finished installing, I'm happy to take questions. And if there are some problems, we can then solve those. Uh, so we have this file uh, hosted in the course web page GitHub repository. So I opened it in a new tab. So now I'm over at GitHub. Mm. And I hope you know that you can download files from GitHub by pressing the raw button. And then just as this is a text file, basically, I can save as. So you need to have the file on your computer in order to save it. And there might be some funny window stuff going on um, when doing that. So I just have, I have a temp folder in my uh, codes directory on the local C drive. So I recommend, especially those who have a computer from the University of Helsinki. So try to work in some directory that is under the C drive uh, and probably have this local data or HY data folder. So work rather in there than on this network drive uh, for doing this kind of running, running scripts and things like this. You might, it 
should work also in the network drive, but this is at least like uh, more clear what's happening. So I save the file, check that there's no funny uh, extensions coming, file name py38, so Python 3.8 GIS just tells a bit about the contents. Uh, I copy that uh, and then save. So now I saved the file. Mm, let's still double check that I didn't get, yeah. So this is maybe a good example. So make sure that it's actually a .yml file mm, somewhere on your computer. And uh, make note on where you downloaded the file. Okay. So I do so that I copy this address. So the uh, file path already now, you'll see later why. Uh, then uh, we should open the command line. And here again, there's multiple possibilities. You can just open the uh, command line in Windows. You could open the PowerShell, which is a bit more powerful, I guess. Uh, but now that you have installed Miniconda or Anaconda, I recommend that you go to the search of your Windows and then type in Anaconda uh, prompt. So let's work in the Anaconda prompt because at least there you can access the Conda tools. You should be able to access the Conda tools with any command line uh, prompt window, but sometimes there might be problems with uh, if they are not in the path variable uh, because, well, long story short, Conda is installed somewhere. And if I now, now type in Conda, uh, you can do that. So you should get this uh, kind of help or info uh, print out of this Conda tool. If you get some error, so then uh, we can check later what's going on. OK. So. Then I change directory CD. Uh, I have on the clipboard the correct file path. I just uh, clicked on the second mouse key to paste, at least on this computer. Now you can see that my uh, terminal window is now located in that correct folder. Now that I'm on a Windows computer, I can type in dir or dir for directory uh, and hit enter so that will give me uh, a printout of the contents of the folder so there's some hidden files and then there is this py38 gis yml so it's easiest to run the commands inside the folder where you have the file other option would be then to uh, run the code wherever and then refer to the file with the full file path. OK, so two things. I have installed Miniconda. I have downloaded the YML file. So then I'm ready just to run the uh, command for creating the environment, um, which can be found in here. So conda env create uh, parameter for file and then file name. Um, so let's do that. Uh, conda, oops. So conda and uh, create. Actually, sorry, I'll jump back for a bit because I want to. If you want to on the computer still verify and modify the contents of the file, you can do that by opening opening it in your favorite. Text editor, I'm a big fan of Notepad++, and you can see that I have over 100 open tabs in there because you can close Notepad++ without actually uh, saving the files. Anyhow, uh, what I want to do, you don't have to do this, but I want to change the name because I already have an environment called Python GIS. So I will call it, you, if you want, you can go and call it GIS. But I also have that one, so I, I won't do it. I will call it Auto GIS 2020. The name doesn't matter, but it's good that it's something that's short and quick to, quick to write because you, you'll be needing to activate the environment every now and then. Okay, I changed the name. 
as mentioned, you don't have to do it, but you can call it GIS, for example. That would be a good name for the environment. Everything else is the same. Uh, and then I continue where I work. So let's still open this page. So then um, conda and create file name py create. And again, if you're lazy, you can press the tab key, hit enter. And then let's just hope that everything works as expected. So this will now take a while especially because we are installing uh, well many packages which then have many dependencies so uh, we are almost if this command now works then we are almost done in a moment what happened so it will start solving the environment uh, and then what what's the next step executing the transaction or something like this Okay, so if you get file not found, so you should verify that you are in the correct folder. So what I did here is that I opened the command prompt window or anaconda prompt, then I went on the C drive CD folder name, then I verified that when calling this conda and command my uh terminal window is located in inside the folder where the yml file is located so check that if you have some it is there well then um uh, check the file name check that there wasn't at least my computer wanted to add this .txt extension there for some very stupid reason. So go to your file browser and check that the file name is .yml and nothing else. So now you can see that uh, solving environment was done. Conda starts to download and extract uh, the packages. Mm. Uh, and there is only a couple of more steps and then it's done so i said that this will take a while so i would say that it takes some minutes it shouldn't take let's say hours to do all these installations Mm, so there's things happening on the background preparing uh, the transaction so that means the process of in, uh, downloading and installing the packages and probably verifying the dependencies and taking care of all that and then we can soon see how we can then start working on on the environment that we created so how can we then open Jupyter lab on our computer with uh, with these GIS tools Mm. Yep. And yeah, so this installation should work without any administrative rights. So after you have installed Miniconda, uh, with some updates, sometimes you might have to then. So often it's good to be able to run commands using admin uh, credentials on whatever computer you are doing programming. But for this, uh, 
it shouldn't be a problem. So my process finished. I'll show now how to activate the environment and start working. And then uh, we can continue with solving any issues if there were. So you can see that Conda is very nice and tells us that to activate, so it's done to activate the environment, use Conda activate auto GIS 2020. So let's try that command, Conda activate auto G. Okay. So, and actually in this uh, Anaconda prompt, you can see that we are now in the base environment, which refers to that if I would launch Python, it would use the kind of default installation or my base Python installation, if I have happened to add something in there. Now that I run this Conda activate auto GIS, you can see that I'm now linked to this uh, auto GIS environment. Uh, and then first, just to test that things work, if you type in Python, uh, so then uh, this environment should, should launch the Python interpreter, it will tell you which version. So it's the very latest version. I hope that's fine, it should be. Uh, and now you can see that there's this kind of uh, console ready for some commands. So it's a Python console here in my command prompt and I could then do import geopandas mm, to see if it works, if something has gone weirdly, then this import command probably doesn't work. It was a bit slow, but at least it worked. So seems that Python has been installed and this Python uh, is able to import GeoPandas. Excellent. Then I type in exit just to exit this uh, Python uh, interface. Now I'm back on the command line. So we did install the Python packages and JupyterLab so how to launch then JupyterLab. Uh, actually, so that's the command, but it's often a good idea to be located in the root folder where you have your um, files. So I will go to, what could I take CD? Take CD. I'll go to the course web page repository and then I'll do, Jupyter lab uh, like this. So then you see things happening. So this Jupyter lab command, assuming that you installed Jupyter lab in this environment, will uh, launch a session that I now got on the other window. Uh, zoop. I hope you can see now this new window that I dragged in. Uh, Git plugin. Uh, Jupyter Lab will ask you to build uh, the installation. So just click on build and it will take care of it automatically. Um, here I'm preparing next week's materials apparently. So um, wherever you have your exercises on your local computer, here I'm now showing uh, the Jupyter notebook from last week's lesson. So I'm navigating on my own computer in this Jupyter Lab instance, and then I can start running and editing these files. And if I, for example, run this cell, uh, this is now linked to my GIS environment. So it's able to uh, import shapely objects. So that's basically it. The longest time was waiting for the stuff to run. And that time you can use for, I don't know, stretching or getting a coffee. Final note. So what happens technically when we create these environments? I now show this on this um, old university computer. So I have the, well, and I also have a very old Anaconda installation, but it doesn't matter. So wherever you installed Anaconda or Miniconda, you will have this uh, ENVS folder. And what happened now is that uh, Conda created this new folder for my environment, which then contains all the specifications. So that's where it kind of technically lives. And if you want to kind of refer, and this is the kind of Python interpreter. So in some other um, software, you might want to need to kind of give a path to the Python interpreter. So then the path to my GIS Python interpreter would be this file path plus python.exe. Okay. 
So that's most of it. I noticed that this is uh, this should should read Python GIS in here. Uh, but if you need a refresher, you can check from from here on the web pages creating a Python GIS environment. Uh, how things were done. And indeed, now, if you need to add new packages, you can then call conda install, conda forge, and so on. So if you manage to do this installation, uh, I'm sure that it will be valid for some while, probably for a long time. But at some point, at some point, you will want to then update, update the environment, update the packages. And that, for that, you can then find help from uh, the Conda, Conda documentation with the latest information. OK. So I leave it, leave it at that. Um, after I stop recording, I can then still check if there were some questions. And maybe those who are watching the YouTube video, if you have some other method of working, you can maybe comment in the comments section. So. Of course, those, if you are working um, with other operating systems, you might then, for example, use Docker files. But that's not maybe the most, most uh, beginner friendly way of getting started with Python installation. So I think it's a good, good skill to know, know how to use Conda. Uh, Conda install commands and these installations from YML files. So thank you uh, and see you then in the next lesson latest. Mm.